Assalamu alaikum and hello everybody. My name is Majid Gale, M A J I D I G A L E, and I will be introducing the speakers tonight. First, coming up, we have a gathering of various leaders and advocates and imams and faith leaders in the community. Starting us off is Executive Director of CARE Minnesota, Jaylani Hussein. Uh, Jaylan Hussein, J A Y L A N I H U S S E I N, Executive Director of CARE Minnesota. I greet you with greeting of peace uh, this afternoon. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings be upon you today. Islamophobia takes in many forms. We have seen unfortunate increased attacks against Muslims here in Minnesota and across this nation. Our mosques have been attacked, our community members have been attacked. We are aware that Islamophobia also occurs on college campuses across this country. And Islamophobia can manifest in a variety of ways, such as the recent incident at Hamlin University, where an art instructor displayed an image of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, which, considered, which we as Muslims consider sacrilegious and hate speech and hurtful to the Muslim community. Muslim scholars across the world over time have condemned the display of images of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And it's not only hateful and forbidden, but it also goes to attack the core beliefs of our faith. I had the privilege and opportunity to visit Hamlin University after this incident. I met with the Muslim I met with the staff the Muslim students, and I conducted what we do, which is a diversity and inclusion presentations about Islamophobia. And in my time there, I found the Muslim students hurt, pained by this incident. And after my presentations, some of the Muslim students had a panel, and in that panel they shared how impactful, hurtful, and felt targeted by an incident that some of the students were not even in that class. And also other incidents that have happened at Hamlin University. I learned from these students afterwards that from that presentation that it was so moving that emotionally moved the many staff who were there, the professors, and the administration. I want to con commend uh, student Aram, the MSA president, who you'll hear from here today, for courageously standing up for what she sincerely believes to be her faith and bringing this matter to the Hamlin administration. I want to now say that uh, we as a community here in Minnesota across the world would like to send a deep appreciation and a thank you to the Hamlin University and specifically to President Miller for her leadership to creating a safe, welcoming, inclusive environment for all students, including Muslim students. It's important to remember that academic freedom is not absolute. And universities have the right to restrict speech that is, promotes hate or discrimination. In fact, that happens every day in institutions across this nation. And that is a protection that many marginalized communities have today that should also be afforded to the Muslim students. It's important to ask this question, how can an environment, a classroom, be considered inclusive when an instructor asks, in this case, Muslim students, or in another place, a black student, or in another place, a Jewish student, to leave the class while they engage, and they did in this case, to depict or to show an image of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is considered to be, as we said, highly offensive, deeply hurtful to many Muslims across the world and here in Minnesota. 
these actions go against these principles of respect, inclusivity, and diversity that many institutions across this country, including Hamlet University, so, so eloquently articulate, hardly implement for some community members. Additionally, it's important to acknowledge something that has not been discussed so far as this incident has become national, international. And that is, President Miller is the first minority and black president of Hamley University, a university that predates to the foundation of our state here in Minnesota. And not now, but even before, she has faced from her colleagues anti-blackness and targeted toward her and other black leaders, which is also at display here in the way that this incident has unfolded. We cannot say that that, that is not going on. It is going on. But we thank her leadership. And it takes in this country, historically, black leaders who have faced and challenge all kinds of oppression. And as we are now few days away from remembering and thinking about the legacy of Dr. King, I am reminded that Dr. King was never loved by the people of his generation. Irregardless, Dr. King stood for freedom of all people in a peaceful way. And I believe Dr. Miller's actions today speak in this moment very loudly to a marginalized Muslim community and to Muslim students across this country who for far too long have never been given their safety. And <clears throat> intolerance and hate continues to target them. I can say, and I know others will say, that Hamlin University, with this decision by President Miller, is a safe campus for Muslim students in the state of Minnesota. And I encourage and welcome other institutions who are similar, who say that they have diversity and inclusion, who say that they want to combat Islamophobia, to also join President Miller and others in making that commitment to our Muslim students. And finally, I will end by saying this. We are a community that's merciful, that understands there's misunderstandings in many issues. And in this situation, we call on Dr. Prater, the instructor of this art class. We invite her to join us, to learn from our community leaders, from our faith leaders, and to understand from our community what this incident meant to us. We welcome that. And obviously, um, that is out to her. And finally, to the countless Muslims who have reached out to us. Many professors who are afraid to even come forward to say and put their name in support of what is going on in Hamlet, out of the fear that their institution will find a way to let them go. I say to them, I also say to the international Muslim community, because we have seen as a society and as a, as a, as a community, these is incidents have far-reaching impact. We've heard from people already globally who are learning about this, and we ask them to continue to stand firm for their beliefs and to help the world be a place that is more inclusive and safe for all of us. And with that, I end my portion of the statement. Coming up next is Imam and Professor Hassan. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. My name is Imam uh, Professor Hassan. Muhammad Hassan, H-A-S-S-A-N, Muhammad, M-O-H-A-M-U-D, uh, former agent professor of Hamlin Mitchell 
College of Law, uh, taught Islamic law, and now professor of Islamic University of Minnesota, uh, teaching Islamic studies. As as professor, uh, especially when we teach uh, colorful types of the students, our big homework is always uh, if there is any topic sensitive that related to the issues of the faith, we should be very careful before even we teach. And that's what I, uh, I always do, uh, this type of the condition. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Hamlin University, uh, especially uh, the president, uh, Ms. Miller, and her team, uh, the bravery uh, uh, action uh, to protect the uh, minority students, Muslims especially, and their faith, and uh, they're a good example for the rest of the universities in America. In Islamic perspective, uh, Muslim scholars agreed that uh, drawing the picture or the image of the not only Prophet Muhammad, but all prophets are forbidden. Uh, haram means forbidden, and uh, many uh, for many reasons. But one of the major me reason is, since Islam is monothetic, monothetic uh, religion that Muslims believe one God. Uh, one of the main thing is to prevent what's called like shirk, means like having partner, or any uh, creation too close to the God. So, and uh, Muslims believe uh, to. Uh, not to depict those prophets, and not only Prophet Muhammad, any prophets, uh, uh, to avoid this uh, major sin uh, uh, to commit. And there is a principle called in Islam, in Arabic, in English means like block uh, ways to harm or ways that causes uh, cause harm uh, to block Way, ways to shirk, means like uh, to have a partner with a God, is one of the reason also not to have the pictures of all prophets. And and on behalf of her faith, uh, this uh, a type of action we appreciate when we will come. And finally, we uh, expect as uh, imams, leaders of the Muslims, uh, that our students, all minority type of the students, they have safe place to learn and feel that they, the place that they are in is like home and nobody insulting their faith, and their belief. Thank you. Coming up next is Executive Director of Islamic, uh, Abu Bakr Islamic Center, uh, Abdullahi Farah. Hello, everyone. <coughs> my name is Abdullahi Farah, A-B-D-U-L-L-A-H-I, last name Farah, F-A-R-A-H. <coughs> Uh, I love uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, uh, more than my parents, my wife, my children. So depicting our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or any core beliefs of Islam is uh, disrespectful 
uh, inappropriate and is forbidden in Islam. Thank you. And lastly, we have the student that was affected, MSA president at Hamlin University, Aram. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aram Wadathallah, Aram, A-R-A-M, Wadathallah, W-E-D-A-T-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A. I'm also the MSA President Muslim Student Association. For learning to take place effectively, educational institutions are obligated to create inclusive and safe spaces for all students. Environments where students worry about their religion being negatively targeted distract them from being and pursuing their academic goals and may hinder them from accomplishing their class obligations. As a senior at Hamley University, I was required to fulfill certain requirements in order to graduate. One of these was a diversity and fine arts class I decided to take the class World Art because it seemed interesting and it would fulfill my two required letters. However, I was shocked to find that I was in a class with a professor who gave me trigger warnings before proceeding to disrespect my religion and me as a Muslim student. Islam teaches us to respect all religions and to treat everyone with equality and respect, even if we have different beliefs. I was extremely hurt and disappointed by the actions of the professor, and I couldn't bring myself to return to that class ever again. It was painful for me and my Muslim students, my family, and my community. Thankfully, the administration helped me to take the class as an individualized study with a different, more understanding professor. When I reached out to the original professor, my voice was not heard at all. And I felt ignored, belittled, and disrespected. However, when I reached out to the administration of Hamlin University, I finally felt like my concerns were taken seriously. The leadership at Hamlin University, including the president, met with me the same day I sent them the email, which was a Friday. They showed me nothing but care and respect. They have continued to support me and the MSA throughout these difficult times. I am very aware of the negative comments and tweets directed towards the Muslim community at Hamlin University. But I want to say, only we as students can truly understand how it felt to have our religion and ourselves hurt in such a way. I want to thank on-campus and off-campus community that support us and the decisions made by the Hamlin administration. Finally, I also want to speak to the many Muslim students out there who have faced similar situations on campuses around the nation. I want you to know that after going through this experience, I can confidently say that Hamlin University values Muslim students and is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment for all students, including Muslims. If you're looking for an institution that prioritizes the well-being of students, including Muslim students, I invite you to consider Hamlin University under the leadership of President Dr. Miller. Thank you.
Thank you, Adam. And with that, we conclude. Now we open the floor up to questions. Imani, um, yep. is the teach, are you asking that the professor of art face any kind of consequence? That's really up to the school. Um, what we as a community know um, is that um, this incident did happen. Uh, as you heard from the student, it impacted her. It impacted the other Muslim students and the other student body. It impacted the Muslim community. Uh, and it's still going to impact more because this incident now has become international. We're anticipating that even more people uh, will join this effort to continue to characterize that. But I would say the decisions uh, about this professor, uh, these are decisions that Hamlet University made. We support them. Uh, but we don't know everything involved and everything that has been shared publicly so far about the incident involving the instructor have been only things that have been uh, told through one narrative. I don't believe the narrative of the universe. We don't believe she was terminated. I don't think she was renewed. Her contract was renewed. Um, and to the earlier point, Hamlet University, and I've heard this from staff and other people, um, there has been before this incident, an ongoing attack against Dr. Miller, the president of the university, because she, as a president, had to make difficult decisions, including reducing administration, reducing departments. And therefore, there has already been, before this incident, a group of professors who have been targeting her. And so therefore, they're the ones who are even pushing. So we've, we're hearing from other people that even this professor may not be as interested in this fight, oh, oh, sorry, is, is interested in this fight as much as these professors who have, I personally believe, anti-blackness in their hearts, targeting this president and trying to encourage systemic changes that would revert back to previous things. My second, then I'll ask you Yes. Um, I think, I think, I don't know, yeah. that maybe the general public does not understand they do not. They do not. that you shouldn't look at the picture right. of the Prophet Muhammad. Right. I never knew that. Let me explain. So, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. If it, I, we're in Bethany Lutheran Church. <laughs> okay? Right. And Bethany Lutheran Church has images of Jesus. Most Americans, most people, have some form of images of Moses or Jesus as Muslims. You will not find the majority, I, and I know there are some Muslims in the world that have some of these paintings, the majority of the Muslim world does not have images of our beloved Prophet Muhammad The way we honor him in our home is a beautiful art piece that could have been presented in this class, which is the way we have it, which is a calligraphy of his name, which is hanging up almost every home, everywhere, across the Muslim world. The, the, the issue, as the Imam mentioned, and I'll allow maybe the Imam to explain, for us it's not about showing the image as a paint or art. The idea is that by doing this, we are going against a commandment of God that telling us you're going to create in generations later, as we're taught about other generations, that they started with celebrating a noble person. But as generations go by and then they start worshiping that person, and so for us, it's a commandment to say that our prophet is no longer with us, but God is with us all the time. And so, and, in, and I will be very honest, I don't believe people understand the reactions that Muslims have. Muslims who, who, who will hear this incident and who are millions of miles, or okay, thousands of miles away, <laughs> or across the world, will feel a certain pain of their religion being targeted. And I think that is what Dr. Miller and Hamlet University recognized in these students. And they did what they do for other students because this idea of academic freedom being absolute is absolutely wrong. But Imani is targeted, so for her to show that is a malicious... I, I, I want to I stay away from the idea that because some people can engage in Islamophobic act without having a malicious act. But that's probably from their ignorance, or maybe they don't understand. But I think this professor of art knew because she created a trigger warning. A trigger warning, meaning that she knew something was going to happen. And by the way, um, 
like I said, I, I, I felt it. I felt it in, in, in the conversations I had with our imams, with our youth, with our leaders. Um, and, um, and I mentioned this. These images still can be shown in private settings, in other places. But in a classroom instructor where the student does not have an option, where the teacher is actually using power in this position, right, to imply that this is acceptable behavior in front of a Muslim and that the Muslim will not be hurt. We know universities across this country do this every single day. I know that Muslims are not on the priority of most Americans. And, but we as Muslims will stand up for our rights uh, irregardless of who's with us and who's against us. I just had a couple of questions yes. over long if you want to answer. Yes. Um, I'm wondering, it sounds like um, that you feel good about how Hamlin administration has handled this. But in terms of campus culture and just some of the other things that have gone on that some of the students have spoken to in the past, do you feel like there's work to do on campus? And how does it feel to be a Muslim student there? And w what is your hope for the future coming out of this? Um, since the pandemic and since I became the president, this is my second year being the president of MSA, um, we've been working on like a lot of things to like change on campus. Um, but for the most part, we've been being heard, um, not only on this incident, like previous incidents, um, we're always heard, um, administration been taking like precautions and like making sure that we're well, we're safe. Even now, um, a lot of emails, a lot of calls, making sure that I'm, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm safe. So I would say that they're doing their best um, to providing us with a safe, respectful space for all minorities, not only Muslims. Um, but yeah, that's it for the most part. Have you felt like backlash from people or how has it been personally for you? Have you been receiving any negative threats or anything? A lot. Okay. A lot and it just breaks my heart that I have to stand here to tell people that something is Islamophobic and that something actually hurts all of us, not only me. And it's just so sad to like see my parents being worried for me to like go to school and being part of... It's never our intent to like affect or decrease freedom of speech. No, we encourage freedom of speech, but not when it's being disrespectful or not when it's like affecting us as people. When I tell you I'm 23 years old, I've never seen a picture of a prophet, never in my whole entire life. And it breaks my heart that a professor who's supposed to be my role model show a picture of the prophet with a trigger warning, knowing that she already knew that it was not okay. It hurts and it breaks my heart to stand here to tell people and beg people to understand me, to feel what I feel. Just one more thing on that, and you don't have to answer, but yes. if anybody else knows, the, the instructor here, one of the things I've read is that, you know, she gave so many warnings, it was on the syllabus, and. Um, there was a warning in class. Um, can you talk a little bit about if if anyone did bring this to her attention beforehand and why or why that even matters, if it does? Uh, I think in generally it doesn't matter uh, because the reality is a trigger warning is actually an indication that you're going to cause harm. And in this situation, even the students don't know exactly what that is until the student actually shows the image and says, this is what I'm going to show and here's the trigger warning. Uh, but in, I, I think that might be a side conversation. I think the real issue here is that if we look at this scenario and we can compare many other scenarios uh, where universities uh, today restrict academic freedom, um, and there are many ways to teach Islamic art, even in this sense, uh, but not in a position where you're, you're literally ha using your power to make something okay that is not okay to Muslims. And so, um, I think that's something that people need to understand. Um, and I think also people, as, as Susan, you mentioned, there's a lot of people tonight who are just going to be like, what's wrong? And they don't understand that we don't do that. 
and it's offensive to us, and it's hurtful to us, and it's hateful to us, um, and it and, and incites reaction. You, I will tell you, no reaction has ever been equivalent globally other than the issues when it's related to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muslims all over the world will protest miles and miles away from an incident to share that. And it actually happened here in Minneapolis. There was another previous <coughs> incident, I, I don't recall exactly the time, where Muslims just left the mosque in the middle of the post-Friday prayer and walked around and talked about how they love their prophet. Right? This has actually happened here in Minnesota. We've had many incidents and, and, and situations. And so uh, schools and universities have a commitment to creating these safe environments. And that's all we're asking for. And that latitude and protection is offered to other minorities and other community groups, rightfully so. We ask for the same. Hey, Lonnie, what's your reaction to the Muslim Public Affairs Council coming out in support of the professor and asking uh, the university to reverse its decision? I will say that there are Muslims all over the world who you can find who can support any issue, with, whether the majority of Muslims agree on it or not. And for this organization, Muslim uh, Impact, they're an organization that we disagreed on and the ACLU disagreed with them, and majority of the civil rights organizations in this country had disagreed with them, when they decided to work with the Obama administration and called all of our community members, our children, our youth, to be uh, uh, in line with their countering violence and extremism program, which many people don't remember because we're in post-George Floyd world. Minneapolis public schools went to the White House in partnership to that program and said exactly this, and I may be one word off, we're going to create lunchroom supervisors who are going to watch Muslim children and surveil them for activities of signs of radicalization. I want you to think about that. The Minneapolis public schools were going to monitor the behavior of Muslim children to see if they're going to be radicalized. If I say that today in a post-George Floyd Ford, there is no one standing to hold that flag. But at that time, MPAC, many others were wrong. And I will say that there are some opinions in the Muslim majority world that may see this acceptable, and I don't want to dismiss that in any way. But the majority of the Muslim ummah and across the world do not accept this. And you can go to any mosque in America, you can go to any mosque all over the world, and you will see immediately a reaction just like the reaction that you're hearing from today. Yeah, the Imam. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Imam Hassan Jama, H A S S A N, last name Jama, J A M A. First, I would like to thank Hamlin University and the President Miller. I believe that was the right decision to honor the Muslim students and make their place, uh, the university, a safe place. I would like to make two. Uh, I would like to make two, two things actually uh, regarding your question. Uh, God, Allah, explain in the Quran clearly how do we treat Prophet Muhammad and the other prophets? Clearly. How should we honor, respect, listen, follow? And clearly God says to everybody, O oh Muhammad, we will send you a mercy to the mankind. <coughs> we didn't send you, accept you at the mercy to all mankind. It's recorded by the tradition of the Prophet. He cried when he saw anyone who mistreated. You know, the elderly, children, children dying. Always when he saw one occasion, a needy and poor people came to his mosque after prayer. Then he saw, you know, that time there's, there were no, uh, you know, the rights and cars, work, you know, far place, no food, no nothing. When he saw, he crashed. And you know his face changed, and the companion knew, you know how he looked like when he's, you know, deeply saddened. Then they went to their houses, and they, you know, brought a lot of food, you know, to help them. So, Islamically, we treat our prophet with their honor and the respect. Not only Prophet Muhammad, all the prophets. You know, when we grew up back home my, uh, in Somalia, we never saw any picture whatsoever, angels, prophets. Anyone. That was not the issue. That's one thing. The other Muslim, you know, uh, uh, professors, I will call them ignorant. Or maybe they have a, you know, weak iman, weak faith. You know, they're respecting their salaries and job. 
you know, I, I was following this issue last few days. I saw some people, they're talking about that. You know, God says in the Quran, when you knock in the prophet's door, be humble, don't raise your voice, be kind, respect him, listen to him. And let me add that. I love Prophet Muhammad more than anybody. You know, my family, my parents, my children, not only that, including myself. Otherwise, I will never be true, true Muslim or true, true follower or true believer. So I don't know where we're going. The question is, why, why Prophet Muhammad's picture? Why? Why? That's the question I'm, I'm asking myself. Also, how many borders we cross? Where are we going as a human being? What is the value left for us? Okay, am I expecting next day, you know, this is your God's picture, this is Allah's picture in class? When I go to university, humbling or different places, I want to gain academic knowledge, not to, you know, intimidate and ashamed and talk about my faith and my belief. And thank you, the brave student and the Muslim student. I see, you know, how she cried, uh, cry, and she made us, all of us, you know, the emotion. Uh, we try to hold our tears. This is unacceptable. We'll never, we will never accept. Whether you call academic freedom, freedom of, of speech, we will never accept that as a Muslim. We don't want to, you know, violate anybody's belief. We respect, you know, all the prophets, any religion. You know, as a Muslim scholar, you know, we study Islam in universities. There is a class called, you know, uh, the religion. You know, otherwise you will never graduate. We respect all the religions. You know, we call what they call themselves. You know, this is what the Christian says. This is what they believe. This is what the Jewish says. This is what, the, you know, any faith. We talk about respecting it. We, you know, go and look at their references and their books. So... As a mankind, as a human being, I don't know where we're going. If we cross all the borders, we have to follow the, uh, you know, what the scripts, uh, we have to follow to respect each other, okay, and to honor each other. That's what's called society. That's what's called coexisting. That's what's called respect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yes. Sorry, you mentioned you expect people to protest this. Are you planning anything? Are you aware of other groups? We, that, so we're going to, re we reminded our Muslim ummah to really live out the true values and the true teachings of our Prophet. Our Prophet taught us to be peaceful, to be respectful, but to also speak the truth in face of tyranny, even if we can't at least hate it in our hearts. But I think today we are speaking the truth and letting Hamley University actually know that they did the right thing. They supported our Muslim students. And that is something that is noble and should be welcomed. Um, and so uh, there will be uh, uh, community events. They, they will be, this topic will be discussed on the Friday prayers, and we're expecting to have an event in, in about a week or so to honor our, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, and to continue to remind people what this really means. And for those who want to learn, want to show up, we'll, we'll let you know about that event, and we encourage you to do that. Um, and I will also remind our, our, our Muslim professors in academia, some of them who reached out to us, uh, in support, but fear, uh, fear oppression and fear that they will lose their jobs if they come forward and support us in this moment. I want to let you know that we have your back. We will support you. Um, and this is a matter of issue where there, there are nuances uh, when we talk about the issue of fr uh, academic freedom. Um, and I just hope the audience tonight can feel in our voices that hurt. And nothing is more than, um, I'll, I'll just conclude with that. Thank you. Yeah, so Sunday the 22nd, we will have an event uh, from, I believe, 2 to 5 p.m. at River Center uh, to allow our community to come together, um, remember the teachings of our beloved prophet, and to continue to speak loud about uh, intolerance, hate, um, and to encourage people to do that. And I finally will add, we welcome Dr. Prater if he wants to reach out to us and learn from our leaders uh, because we always want to be in a position to educate and teach people uh, exactly uh, what our religion says. And this Friday, all the imams addressing. Yes. Uh, all this Friday, we're expecting the entire community to talk about our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at every mosque um, and to also encourage people to support Hamlet University. So for the public who wants to support us, one of the ways they can do that is to contact the Hamlet University and encourage them to continue to support the Muslim students and all other, other other students. Thank you, everybody. We have a second press conference for the Somali media, so <coughs> once you guys are done here, we'll, we'll do that, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much for tuning in to the Community USA. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for listening to me.